All right, hey guys, Daddy here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys a deck I recently topped my locals with. I've topped it two other times with this deck, a pretty close build with it. So I decided to show you guys the build I ran this week. It's probably my favorite deck at the moment. I love this deck so much. So uh, let's go into it. The deck is 100 Synchro Turbo, kind of. A lot of the 100 decks I see right now are playing more kind of slowly, or they're, getting, they're going off advantage and not making big beaters like I am. I'm not saying that way is bad, but this is what I enjoy this deck a lot better because I can win faster versus some people, and I can like surprise decks that would otherwise give me a lot of trouble. So let's look at the deck. First, we got one my hunt or one two three paw hunters, three paw hunters, and then triple violent prism. This is your tuner of the deck, your main card in the deck. So you're gonna want three of these main tuner deck. You need this card to make a lot of your plays with the deck. Triple Ma Hunter. Uh, same thing as Pa Hunter if you don't know, but it's just stronger, so yeah. Uh, if you don't know what the Hunters do, Hunters. Basically, if you summon a Hunter, you can uh, summon another. Uh, can have an additional normal summon of a light Thunder type monster. So uh, this card's good. These cards are good because uh, against Max C, it doesn't stop them. If your opponent Max Cs, you can still normal summon, normal summon, normal summon, normal summon, and then you can just sink once. Or you just think once you just overlay once for your uh, thing and they only one for one it at most. Then for your uh, other monsters in the deck, you got two summoner monks. Help make your. A lot of the times I go summoner monk into this, onto one of these two. And I drop, 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 drop. And I'd make like a Stardust or like a Thunder King. I mean, I'd make like a Stardust or a Shockmaster or something. So that was always nice to have. So two summoner monks. Two Thunder Kings. These are for. I don't know. They're like the best. They're the best like normal well, standalone card in this deck so you really need to have them and then uh, the new card that's out in this set that makes this deck a lot better thunder seahorse just by using this card you're plus one off of it uh, you when you draw this card you basically just discard it you can add two uh, thunder monsters with 1600 attack or less the reason i'm only playing two is i don't have a lot of deck space in this deck and i'm trying to make it as tight as possible and as fast as possible and these, I can't special summon the turn I activate it, so I lose a lot of the power I would otherwise have. That's why I'm only running these at two, only running two of these. Then we got triple reckless reads. Uh, so like I said, it's like a turbo deck, so reckless um, is probably is really good in here because you can immediately uh, gain advantage off of this. This plus seahorse, I've actually ended up with like ten card hands, and I just go summon, 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 and they're just like fuck. Okay. Then we got double bottomless. Bottomless is really good this format because of, uh, because of mermails, because of agents. With mermails, agents, windups, and rabbit basically being like the top decks of this format, I decided this was a good kind of, this is probably like the best card to pick right now as like one of the best back rows. Because of, it hits Kabu's little saber sword. So I think it doesn't hit his tour guide, but it hits their, whatever they make up besides them mains. A 2D prison. Uh, D prison um, puts in work because it stops Zen mains and other cards that are normally not stopped. Uh, Stardust, something like that. I hate this playing against this card. This card is Compulse. I hate playing against them because they just fuck with my Stardust and all. They fuck with my Stardust. My thought ruler is what I have to go in if I suspect one of these cards. But if I run into a Mirror Force, I'm kind of screwed. Then that's why I don't know about making them all the time. Then we got one Fiendish Chain. Since I can't, I'm not playing Valors in here. I don't really like Valor right now. Valor or um, Max C. Max C is a maybe. If I play windups, I should probably start side decking it, but right now, um, I'm only playing Phoenix Chain to get rid of my, or to stun my opponent, really. Because usually just dropping Stardust or something is enough, but I've noticed that I need to stop something that'll stop my opponent's uh, effects from going up. We got one Call the Haunted. Uh, this will bring back your Violon. If they hit the, it's like the heavy or something you have this set in a Violon engrave, what I'd usually do is I'd call the Violon. They'd kill it and if I had a monster on board, it would special summon. It would summon to the field, die, and then I could equip it to that monster by paying 500. We got one, uh, one warning. I'm only playing one warning right now. Uh, you don't really want to draw another one because paying half your life points just to get two summons can be bad, especially if they're especially since monsters are born and beaters like uh, BLS are around. Whereas even if you warning it, they might come out and just kind of you might lose you the damn I've done it before. So I decided to only play one warning. Oh, one judgment. Uh, judgments. You have to you have to know when to use judgment. I feel like I think a lot of bad players, are, even when I was uh, not as good as I am now per se, would judgment at bad times and it would cost me games. So I decided to one judgment was enough. Then we got those the Sandalone Mirror Force. 
Um, I like this card right now. People aren't expecting it. Windups will run into this thing all day. You gotta play it. Alright, so one smashing ground. Uh, I like the one for one in this. It's really good. A lot of matchups. Like, if they have a Christie on board, you really want to hit this because this is your main out of cards like Christia. Uh, Ladia is half the need it usually. And you don't give them a thousand life points. I've got the rid of just about everything. With Chaos Dragons not being as big of a deck right now, and I really don't have a problem with them because I can get over all their cards. This card's way too good not to play. One duality. Um, duality is kind of like a staple. Adds consistency to the deck, whereas other where it needs it. Uh, your Trinity, as people call it, Heavy Storm, Dark Hole, Monster Born, played in like almost everything. Then probably the, one of the most broken cards in the deck that sets up combos: Recycling Batteries. I'm only playing one because I don't have another one. I don't know what I'd fit where I'd fit it in at. What Recycling Batteries does is it adds your Violin on a 100 back and then you can Synchro again right after that so it's really good. It's also uh, for a Summoner Monk plays it helps. And then your back row hate itself, just the two MSTs, you really need these right now. Because a lot, of, just about every deck is running back row. Minus maybe Mermills, but you need this to chain to their Abyss Fears so um, the only other card is I was running a Night Beam but I cut that because I needed space. And then you got your Forbidden Lance. You need these to protect your, your big boss monsters that you sink into, like Stardust. So these are like the, one of the best cards. So like you don't want if you run into like a deep prison, you have to chain this to save your ass. Then triple Upstart Goblin. Like I said, these the deck you want to be able to get your upstarts out as fast as possible, and these do the best job of it because they um your opponent made in a thousand. But this is more of a control deck, so you don't really give a shit if your opponent gains a thousand. And you're sitting on a 3500 Stardust and like a, in a 3, in a 3800 Strap Dragon, being able to make 4,000 beaters. You really don't give a shit what your opponent can do about it. So that's the reason I'm playing this card. Uh, that's the entire deck. It's 40. That's the entire main deck. It's 40 cards. I guess I'll go into the extra deck now. This is kind of a long video, damn. Um, two Strap Dragons. Strap Dragon. This card is so broken in this deck because if you have a Violent on board. Uh, you can tribute like on your monster star zone. You can tribute the violin, pop a card, and then equip it to strap. You mean straps at 3800 now. You can get over just about everything in the game. Also, strap drag in this way you can pop your opponent's monsters all day. Uh, if you see, since you would make them with violin, you can tribute the violin you use. Pay, it's basically pay 500, pop one of your opponent's mon your opponent's monsters or spells or traps. Strap dragon is really good in here. The next main card I made is Stardust Dragon. A lot of people are running mirror forces, torrentials, bottomlesses. This is your out to them. Um, there's the only weakness this card it has right now is deep prison and pulse, but that's what the next card I'll show you is for. One thought ruler archfiend. Uh, this card is so good in this deck. There's times where I'll just run out of like draws and stuff, and this card will. Uh, I mean, this is where I start getting low on life points. I've had times where I've had this run over like Montana Fortress and stuff. I may die, but in the end, I do gain the twenty seven, the twenty five hundred, so it saves me. Or I've had like a Stardust on board. I ran it over, and then I negated it with Stardust, and I gained twenty seven hundred. So this is really good right now. Um, this is in shitty condition, so don't give me shit about it. One Red Dragon Archfiend. This card's the strongest level 8 you can make, and it's a 4,000 beater with a Violent equipped to it, so he, you need him sometimes, especially over the Pesty, Spear Reaper, Marshmallow, and all that shit. And then we got one Colossal Fighter. Oh, this is a different art, but yeah, Colossal Fighter. The reason for him is if you're playing against a deck like that runs like BLS or something, he can run into it, crash, and take their BLS, or you can just keep coming back if they have a big beater, like you can tie him with Red MD if you need to. Which is what I've done, I've with the Red MD, comes right back out and swims again, so it's really good in this in this deck. And then uh, we got one Tech to Taster in case I need a monster or born one of their, like their Veil or something and sink for something that'll save me, save my ass, he's out there. And I had a little bit of extra space in here. Next we're going to the X Seeds. Um, we got one Dijin. Obviously, this is just like a safe card. I really, I don't, I didn't make him a single time. I didn't need him. Uh, all right, like I said, one guy got cowboy to stop a lot of your opponent's plays. All right, this card gets over Hyperion, which saved my ass one game. <laughs> he did die to Venus afterwards, but he ran over Hyperion, and then I won because I made Stardust next turn. Uh, he does that extra burn. You really kind of need to play him this format, and like now that he's out, he's too good not to play. And they'll probably notice that you do need back row to save his ass. Utopia, obvious staple. One Utopia Ray. Um, you do pay a life points a lot with this deck, being in the fact that every time you use a violin, you pay 500. I, was at, I think one game I was at 1300 once. Ended up dropping Utopia by paying. I paid 500, dropped Stardust. 
Dropped Utopia. Dropped Utopia in that same play. Overlaid for Utopia Ray. Was at 800 because I paid for the Vylon. Detached all, f detached all three and swung over, um, I think, his Malefic Cyberan in one. Then we got one EV Dish Team Arrow Geist. This is, I don't know, this card's okay. I feel like there's a time I might need to make them. Uh, one guy was running. Oh, I played against a deck. I think he was running either Mass Dragon or like Shining Angel or something with some weird deck. And I made him then. That's the only time I made him. Maybe versus like a deck that's running Trooper, I might need it, but yeah. And then one operative because it's really broken and you need it for a lot of stall decks. Gem Knight Pro because he's the strongest, level 4. And then God card, Shockmaster. This card's so busted. Um, you can make This deck makes this card so easily that I've actually gone turn 1, Shockmaster, Stardust, go. And I called spells, he's just like sitting there. I don't know what to do to this shit. I was, and I just won. So that's the, that's the extra deck, guys. And then I'll go on to the side deck here. Uh, we got your third Thunder King, of course. Because uh, he's really uh, good in this format against like Gadgets, Deirdia, and Heroes. Gemini Imps for Dark World matchup. A uh, Dyna, because Dyna's just good in general. Uh, this will save you a lot first. I actually did bring this in versus my Agent matchup. Did not draw it at all, sadly, or else that probably would have saved my ass. One Night Beam for more back row hit. One MST for more back row hit. And a third Lance to stop back row hit for more back row hit. Uh, one spirit converter. I bring the same game too a lot because I knew my opponent would be popping my back row like crazy. I knew people would bring in MSTs and stuff for me because I did set a lot of cards. So this was another one of the cards like reckless for a beta. For the Deirdia matchup, triple system down. Deirdia, Dadget, Mach, and all that fun stuff. Uh, for rabbits, Stidy and Dirge, they can't overlay for La Dia or Dolka. And if they go tour guide, I'd just flip this up and they'd be like, well, shit, what am I supposed to do now? And then. Uh, two Mind Crush. I play this for decks like Chain Burn or anything that stalls. Heroes, it's not bad against either because if you know they have a Miracle, like you saw them duality a Miracle, I'd flip this up and hit it. Or like if you just had like one card in your hand you didn't mind discarding which is happening before, I would call like Miracle Fusion or Super Poly and that'd be fine. Uh, with Gadgets, I see them at a Fortress, I'll chain this and then I'll just stop them from doing their play there. Then last but not least, the second Mirror Force. I felt like this was would be important against the Wind Up matchup. Because you flip this up and you basically, they can't attack it and this just destroys their entire field. They don't have good outs to Mirror Force really. So that's why Mirror Force is in here. Uh, that, and that's all guys, that's the deck. Um, I need to make some changes to it of course. It's not perfected, I'm going to regionals, I'm going to take to regionals soon hopefully. And maybe get a nice top there and I'll talk about it then. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Remember to subscribe and do all that fun stuff. And watch all my other videos later.